I will, will turn it over to the mayor for his. He said it was going to be 15 minutes. I think I'm going to. Uh, it's probably less. It's probably no. less. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, mayor, you said less yeah. means five. No. <laughs> we are coming on the clock. Oh boy. Oh boy. I have a little meeting about traffic and everybody in, gets in an interesting mood. Um, yeah. uh, that was actually a very good discussion. Um, and I think we've come up with some really great uh, stuff for, for Morris Avenue and other areas in town that, that um, we continue to uh, look to uh, our police department for to make sure they enforce uh, safety in our streets. All right. Today, or I should say tonight, I am pleased to present to the citizens of Morristown and the town council the fiscal year 2018 municipal budget. The budget proposed tonight totals $52.4 million and includes a number of initiatives aimed at further improving government services and infrastructure. But this budget, which includes operating fund, capital fund, and store utility fund, while reflecting the realities of unavoidable cost increases, balances fiscal integrity with strategic investment to maintain the level of service our residents expect. This town has come a long way. Eight years ago, my administration was forced to make hard decisions about how we provide services while stemming the financial bleeding that occurred for years. While working to turn the tide of investment back into Morristown so that our community could flourish. Now that we have made Morristown as desirable to others as we long time, as us longtime residents always knew it could be, we can turn our efforts towards investing in the quality of life initiatives and making government work even better. In the past year, we have made strides in improving technology and using it to streamline how citizens do business with our government. In the Department of Code Enforcement, we began streamlining application processes to cut the time in half and have armed our inspectors with tablets to do more in the field, resulting in the highest levels of productivity in four years. The next phase of this implementation will allow for online pet licensing and payments to be unveiled in just a few weeks followed by streamlined tenant registration and other process improvements. I recently hired our new Director of Code Enforcement, who is working with our staff to facilitate the next phases of initiatives. We welcome him to our team, and that is team, and that's Al Chifo, who's sitting right there in the front row. We, uh, we are very happy he's with us. Safety and security are always a concern, always, and our police bureau works very hard every day for our residents and visitors. Morristown is called the military capital of the American Revolution and has become the symbol of freedom, the symbol of rights for everyone without oppression. As a result, large gatherings are common in this, in this town where people freely exercise their First Amendment rights. Our police department continues to provide top-notch crowd control for a number of large gatherings that draw thousands of people to our town. But they have also implemented initiatives to, county, to, count, to the county to counter opioid epidemic and focus on pedestrian safety enforcement and education. This year, we will be the pilot town for a new bicycle safety initiative with Rutgers University to ensure that drivers and bicyclists are aware of and adhere to bike riding safety laws. All that while continuing pedestrian safety initiatives, vehicular safety enforcement, crime prevention and investigation, and all of their other daily tasks. The two new recruits, there are two new recruits planned for this year, including at least one military vet, vet, veteran. I'd like to take a moment to thank our men and women in blue for what you do every day. Thank you, Captain. We really appreciate what you do. The Fire Bureau is also vital to our safety and security of our town. They receive over 1,600 calls for service last year, provided fire prevention services to our businesses and residences, and continue their participation in the Urban Search and Rescue, USAR, program. Through this, through this FEMA-funded program, our firefighters are trained and equipped for all types of complicated rescue techniques and are called upon other towns to assist when there is a major accident or rescue effort. This program directly benefits our residents, as well as fusing our department with skill set and specialized equipment that is typically limited to large city departments. This along with local efforts like the distribution and installation of hundreds, hundreds of smoke detectors every year demonstrates the commitment of our firefighters to the welfare of our residents and visitors. This year, we plan to expand, to expand the prevention efforts even further. We will be supporting uh, the fire department by an addition of one additional firefighter to their roster. Chief, you 
and your staff and volunteers must be commended for your efforts. Thank you all. Redevelopment projects continue to bring new energy into Morristown, complementing the existing character that attracts new businesses and residents to our historic community. While the Fox Rothschild project in 185 Morris Street opened in 2017, additional developments are expected to come online this year. The next phase of Speedwell Redevelopment Project, Modera 55, will initiate occupancy this summer. While the Metropolitan Lost at 11 D. Hart Street will begin moving their first tenants this week. The completion of 11 D. Hart marks the ending of an era, as this is the final piece of the Epstein's redevelopment area. And, and I must pause there for a second. I, I saw Carl Boberg the other night and told him that we were going to be mentioning this in, in my speech. And uh, this is really something that has come to fruition, as this was a dream uh, 10 years ago to the infusion of what our downtown could be. And the Epstein's redevelopment um, from, from 40 Park and Metropolitan now to the townhouses on Maple and now to 11 D. Hard really has proven to be the shot in the arm that started the revitalization along with the theater and other things in Morristown. And we are truly grateful uh, for their investment in a time when people were not investing in communities, that there was a crisis, financial crisis in the country, and they had secured their financing and they were able to build. And we are reaping the, the, the benefits from that uh, multi, multi-million dollar investment in our community. So I wanted to let him know I was going to ask him publicly thank him and his team for what they uh, have accomplished here in Morristown. This project achieved the goal of sparking reinvestment in Morristown. There has clearly been a transformation downtown over the last 10 years that has positively impacted our community well beyond its project borders. That is why the New Jersey chapter of American Planning Association awarded Morristown with the Great Place Downtown Award in 2017. The other side of Market Street is the next frontier, as two projects begin construction this year, including a new hotel, we will continue to encourage reinvestment in our town that transforms blight into part of the vibrant fabric of our community. And we have not, nor will we ever forget about affordable housing. We have generated many affordable housing units as part of the redevelopment and will continue to make affordable housing a priority in any residential project. Taxpayers should be proud of the progress made in the last eight years as growth brought many new businesses and residents to town. In addition to removing blight, that activity has also directly benefited the taxpayer. The development that has occurred since 2010 adds $98.5 million in assessed value. With this additional value, including the hospital and the pilots from redevelopment projects, every taxpayer saves $1,150 per $100,000 assessed value over the next 10 years. That means if you're the average homeowner with a property assessed at $354,097, you will have saved $4,079, which is a meaningful, meaningful savings. With new development, there has been increasing discussions about traffic. So, last year we invested in engaging an international firm to help us understand and mitigate traffic through town. What did we learn? That most trips are from out of Morristown. In fact, we have confirmed that one-third of all trips are simply passed through from to and from 287. So my administration will be working with the county and our neighboring towns to work towards reasonable regional planning. However, we also learned that there are several steps we can take on our own borders, including the upgrading of traffic signal equipment to ensure proper signal timing, which is a fix that is now underway with the assistance of NJDOT. We are excited to continue discussing the initiatives recommended as part of the outcome of this study, including how to infuse a more robust analysis on traffic impacts, to our development, reviewing processes, and allocating incremental costs to developers. In addition to addressing traffic, the town has invested in open space and recreation every year of my administration. This past year, the town constructed Clayton Woods, a beautiful park now being enjoyed for passive recreation. The official ribbon cutting will be later this spring. The first phase of Granby Park improvements was also completed, and Lidgerwood Field received a facelift from from DPW with the assistance of Woodman Pro Woodmont Properties who hosted a community service day and tree planting there last year. This year begins the first phase of the park adjacent to the Speedwell redevelopment area, as well as the new improvements planned at Caldwell Park, Granby, and upgrades to the field house at Burnham Park. These improvements will accompany the in initiation of upgrades to the Burnham Park pool complex. There is also a new community garden under construction at Elliott Street, 
Mr. Armington, uh, with the assistance of grant dollars awarded in 2017. We are most excited about finalizing the acquisition of 11 acres of open space to the preserved adjacent to the Loyola Retreat Center. The town has also begun an enhancement of trails at Foots Pond Wood, a project funded by a grant of $135,000 awarded from Mars County. This project dovetails with the endeavors of the Mayor's Environmental Commission in leading the effort to initiate the hydrology study at Foots Pond. They also have organized lakeside cleanups and, and other efforts, including working with Sustainable Marstown towards recertification. Thanks to these two organizations, Marstown has earned the silver certification for Sustainable Jersey for the first time and is only one of 48 municipalities in New Jersey to earn this high honor. Kudos for all those who get this recognition for those environmental and sustainable Marstown. The Shade Tree Commission has also been an active part of our community. In 2017, they facilitated the donation of 10 street, street trees from several generous donors. And thanks to their efforts, we were prepared for the emerald ash borer, an insect that has wrecked havoc on communities in this country. Thanks to the Shade Tree Commission, Marstown was educated and prepared before this dev devastating epidemic reached our borders. Last year, they also earned a grant from TD Bank to complete a major tree and shrub, pl shrub planting at Marstown High School for Arbor Day. Thank you to the members of the Shade Tree Commission for your hard work on behalf of our Shade Tree. The town has been extremely successful with many grants awarded recently. In 2017, the town was awarded a total of $2.9 million in grant funding for various activities, including the acquisition of 11 acres of open space for preservation. These grant dollars demonstrate the commitment of my administration to be good stewards of your tax dollars by leveraging our resources to multiply their impact. Another one of those grants includes $1 million to improve the streetscape at Spring Street from Speedwell to Water Street, which complements the town's existing streetscape investment on MLK Avenue, and improves the pedestrian connection from the green to the other side of Headquarters Plaza through pedestrian improvements down Water Street. We anticipate construction to commence next year. The next phase of the MLK streetscape project will continue this spring and include a beautiful pedestrian plaza at Patriot's Path Trailhead. The town will also be completing the next phase of Washington Street Streetscape, excuse me, this year. Light down to three minutes? Two. <laughs> All of these capital projects are led by our engineering division, a small but robust operation. Last year, in addition to a new park and streetscape projects, the division oversaw the paving of 1.8 miles of roads and oversaw a half a million in curbs, sidewalk and drainage improvements. That's Anthony. And he deserves uh, uh, recognition because um, it's not like he's staffed with eight, 18 engineers um, uh, at, at his beck and call. He is in the trenches with his team uh, every day and, and, and uh, uh, our roads are in good shape, state roads are something to be desired, and, uh, but he does a great job in our engineering department and his team is to be commended. Along with the capital project and supporting the townwide mobility study with the planning division, the engineering division modernized our in-house technology through development of in-house GIS and 3D photography and modeling capabilities. This year, these initiatives will continue to enhance the physical uh, environment of our town. Our workforce is the backbone of our town, our most valuable resource. Given all that we have and continue to achieve as a community, I am proud of the town employees and continue to be impressed by their contributions. From our police who assured the safety of over 10,000 visitors that arrived in our town earlier this year, not once, but twice, to the recovery from wind damage and volumes of snow removal expertly executed by our DPW, to the life-saving and public service initiatives from our firefighters. Every day I am reminded what our why our employees are so vital. In 2017, the town invested in our entire workforce through expanding training, including customer service, diversity, harassment training for everyone, as well as a comprehensive leadership training program for our supervisors. We also updated our personnel handbook at the end of last year to ensure that our policies are modern and user-friendly. We will continue enhan enhancing our workforce this year through additional professional development, 
as well as modernizing, modernizing payroll and time management functions to make these processes more efficient. Furthermore, all six of the town collective bargaining agreements are in the midst of active negotiation. And I am committed to settling contracts that fairly compensate our employees while maintaining the cost effectiveness, effectiveness of our taxpayers. It should be noted, however, that much like the rest of the country, the rising costs of personnel are a major driver of cost increases this year. Health care pension costs alone total over $1.1 million in increased appropriations, while increases in salaries from anticipated collective bargaining agreements add additional pressure to the operating budget. However, we must continue to support our employees, as they are our most valuable asset. Nevertheless, local revenues are stable and property values continue to grow. Our budget is sound, yet this year's anticipated expenditure increases are greater than can be offset by new revenue sources or reductions in costs without impacting service delivery. Therefore, this year, this year's proposed budget includes a modest increase of 1.3 pennies. However, the municipal tax rate still remains less than it was seven years ago. My administration remains committed to sound fiscal management why, which is why the fund balance policy has been proposed, proposed to the council for adoption. Now, I, I pause there um, because this is, I think, a, going to be a very, piece, a very important piece of legislation um, for you to consider. Um, and uh, the policy ensures that there will be a long-term stability for our financial foundation. So uh, I'm just going to pause and ad-lib for a second. We all know uh, no one stays forever in, in the job they're in. Um, eventually, I will not be mayor, um, but I am committed to make sure that what happened to me when I came in as mayor will not happen to the, to the man or woman who precedes me as mayor. When I took office, I was $5 million in the negative. What this does, it keeps, if I got this correct, $10 million in our surplus at all times, not to go below. I and mean, you've passed a law that makes that happen. Now, the next mayor could get, come in and ask the council to change that. You guys could change it, but I think there's something to that, that um, to have a sound financial community means to have a good surplus, it's good for bond rating, it's good for borrowing, and it leaves a legacy for the next mayor that comes in that doesn't have to walk into a place and lay off 17% of the workforce, find money where money didn't exist, streamline budgets for years in a row just to, just to get out of the water. And I think it's something that I'm going to ask the council to, to support. And I think it's a good, sound policy. Uh, and it, and it, uh, it is supported by our administration, Ms. Barrett. Um, and I think it's something that we can, we'll discuss. And uh, I wanted to mention it tonight because uh, I think it's important for the future of Marshtown. Um, it also, it's long-term stability for our financial foundation and safeguards our coffers such that we are prepared should catastrophe lie ahead. It further affirms to the investment and credit communities our commitment to making the tough short-term decisions to maintain long-term financial and operational stability for our future generations. This year's budget reflects a choice, not an easy choice, but a reasonable choice. I'd like to thank the business administrator, Jillian Barrett, our chief financial officer, Frank Mason, for their many hours and dedication and hard work in selling the most important policy doc doc document that we have each year. And when I say that, I can tell you that once the budget cycle goes through and this is adopted, we will get to a place where we will adopt this budget, they get a break. It's not a long break. And because I've been doing this for a number of years, I see what takes place shortly after the budget process. They're in next year's budget process already. It, it's, it's, the, it's the most important document. It's the hardest. It's, it's hard to run the business of the town when you have a couple hundred employees in a town this busy. But this document, this work on this budget by, by our department heads, by Frank Mason, by Jillian Barrett, and our town attorney. I wanted to give him a mention because he's not in the speech. Um, it, it is something that, that, that uh, I'm very grateful and honored that we are uh, that we hired Jillian Barrett and Frank Mason and the directors we have because uh, in our department law um, because it really it, it reflects on what she does every day uh, with the finance of this community and, and uh, I'm eternally grateful um, for your leadership and um, 
and my hope is that you will be in Morristown for a very long time. Um, so saying that, I'm not trying to make anybody feel, uh, you know, but it's a commitment and it, it really does uh, matter for a future generation. Um, so saying that, um, I'd like to thank all the department heads working to restore financial sensibility and prudence to the way government operates and fosters a cooperative, responsive municipal service delivery that our citizens feel proud to call Morristown. And to our employees, each of you serves a vital role in bringing these goals to fruition and would not be able to accomplish any of this without our employees. Our community is a better place because you are a part of our team. And I thank you. I pledge to every resident to continue my best efforts for this great town. Thank you for your continued trust and ongoing support of the efforts of my administration. Mayor Angelou once said, all of us knows not what is expedient, not what is going to make us popular, not what the policy is, or the company policy, but in truth, each of us knows what is the right thing to do, and that is how I am guided. Here is to a great year for Morristown. Thank you, and God bless you, and God bless Morristown.